The following lecture is recorded and produced by Momin Ahmad Rizvi, and the accompanying note for this lecture can be found on orpaho.live, and it is called Polar Coordinates, colon, Further Pure Maths 1. So if you have that downloaded, um, open it up now, or if you don't have it downloaded, go ahead and download it and open it up now, because it'll be useful to follow along with that note during this lecture. Right. Now, let's start with polar coordinates. Now, polar coordinates are a way of representing stuff in the 2D plane. And what you're probably familiar with, what you're probably familiar with is the x-axis and the y-axis, right? And any point can be represented by me telling you the x value and y value. So this was the Cartesian coordinate system. I'm probably spelling it wrong, but anyways, this this was the Cartesian coordinate system. And in this, what we did was, uh, I can tell you the X value, I can tell you the Y value, and you would end up at the desired point. And any point on uh, the 2D plane can be represented by me telling you the x value and the y value, right? So if I take an example, let's say, let's say, let's make a new graph. Let's say this is 3 comma 4, right? The x axis, the y axis. What 3 comma 4 means, you go 3 units in the x axis in the x direction, and you go 4 units in the y direction, you end up at 3 comma 4. And this was the Cartesian way of doing things, right? So if I tell you another story, if let's say you and me are both at the pole, this is called the pole. In the Cartesian system, this was called the origin. In the polar graph, this is called the in the polar graph, this is called the pole. Right? So let's say you and me we're both uh, both at the pole, and we need to go at this shop X, right? This is some shop X over here. I could tell you how much you need to go horizontally, i.e. x, how much you need to go vertically, i.e. y. But what would probably be easier for me is if I told you how, what direction you need to face, first of all, what direction you need to face, and secondly, how further you need to go. Right? Let's just, let's assume this goes right at the point, the direction was the drawing was a bit off but you get the point that any that i could tell you the how to go to shop x by telling you what direction you need to face and how further you need to you needed to go so the polar way of doing things is r comma theta instead of x comma y where r is the distance from the pole and theta is the direction it's not really the direction but you can call it the direction it's actually this is the initial line Right, which is theta equals zero, this is theta equals pi over two, pi, three pi over two. Theta is actually uh, the angle it makes with the initial line. And by convention, by convention, we consider this to be the positive direction, this to be the negative direction, right? So let's say, hmm, let's say five pi over six, five pi over six would be somewhere over here. This would be 5 pi over 6, right? Because you go all the way till 5 pi over 6. Negative 5 pi over 6 would be somewhere like this, right? This would be negative 5 pi over 6, right? So the first thing that comes up, how do you convert from Cartesian way of doing things to polar way of doing things, right? If you have a certain point, let's say this is point... 3 comma 4 because that's that's a nice that those are two nice numbers let's say this is 3 comma 4 and this is represented in the cartesian representation this is the x-axis the y-axis and i've told you that you need to go 3 in the x direction and you need to go 4 in the y direction so of course uh, this can be represented by the by the polar system too right so first of all let's look at first half of the story, how do you calculate the value of r? Let me remake this triangle over here. 
this is 3 this is 4 and this is R well uh, according following the Pythagoras' theorem we know that R squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared R would turn out to be 5 we got our R value 5 secondly we need to find this angle we can use tan theta equals 4 over 3 theta would turn out to be that's theta would turn out to be 0.927 radians right so my point 3 comma 4 in the cartesian representation could be represented as 5 comma 0.927 radians in the polar format on the flip side of the story if you have been given the polar representation and you need to get the cartesian for a single point right so let's say this is given right i told you that you faced uh, let's say you face 60 degrees let's actually let's say pi over 3 because uh, in polar in polar coordinates you usually give the deg the theta in radians right so let's say you face pi over 3 and the distance you walked was two units right and obviously this has some 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 horizontal value x and some vertical value y we need to find what those x's and y's are right so let's remake this triangle over here this is 2 this is pi over 3 right this would be this would be y this would be x well we can use we can use cos and sine right so let's do x plus cos pi over 3 is equal to x over 2 right because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse so x would be 2 cos pi over 3 x would be root 3 because cos pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 let's look at y y would be sine pi over 3 is equal to y over 2 y would be 2 sine pi over 3 y would be um oops i made a mistake <coughs> cos pi over 3 is actually half so x would turn out to be 1 and sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 so y would turn out to be root 3 all right so 2 comma pi over 3 would go to 1 comma root 3 right and of course these two are just specific cases but uh, they can be generalized as for polar to cartesian right card let's just write card because i'm probably butchering the spelling right if you're given r comma theta the polar representation would be r cos theta and then r sine theta and if you've been given cartesian and you need to find the polar right this would be x comma y r would be square root of x squared plus y squared and theta would be arc 10 of y over x right so this is it for the for the specific points how do we convert from polar to cartesian and from cartesian to polar right now let's look at not just points but actual functions right i'll just take a question from the notes itself so let's take the second example right so if you have give, if you have been given the function in the polar format if you, give, if you have been given the equation in terms of x and y what you could do is use the same functions above use same functions like r equals r cos theta y equals r cos theta x uh, uh, y equals r sin theta x equals r cos theta r squared is x squared plus y squared and some more identities that are listed in the notes for example cos 2 theta is cos squared is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta and so on they're all listed in the notes 
Okay, so x squared minus y squared equals 9. We know x squared is r cos theta. We know y squared is r sine theta. This would equal 9. So r squared cos theta cos squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta equals 9. Let's take r squared common. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta equals 9. We know our useful identity. This would be cos 2 theta equals 9. And r squared will be 9 over cos 2 theta. So this is from po Cartesian to polar. Let's look at polar to Cartesian. And let me look at an example from the notes. Let's take the second one because simpler. The second one is okay. So let's take the second example that is given in the notes. That is four equals r equals one minus four cos two theta, right? And usually in in, in the Cartesian format, it's the functional represented as y is a function of x in the polar format it's as r is a function of theta right so we've been given this this function of this polar format and we need to get into y equals something something right so the way we do this is we use the same identities as before um, so r let's uh, let's clean things up a bit r equals oops r equals 4 1 minus uh, cos 2 theta can be represented as 1 minus sine squared theta 1 minus 2 sine squared theta right? and, and, and these uh, and all of these identities are given in the notes uh, so this would turn out to be r equals 4 um, 2 sine squared theta this would be r is 8 sine squared theta right so i could directly plug in r as root of x squared plus y squared but then i am left with this sine squared theta i can't i can't do anything without it what i could do is i know that y i know that y is equal to r sine theta so if i get an r squared over there i can uh, change it as y squared so let's multiply both sides by r squared r cubed equals 8 r squared sine squared theta right r cubed would be r well r is x squared plus y squared all of this cubed and r squared sine theta would be 8 y squared uh, let's write this as x squared plus y squared 3 over 2 is equal to 8 y squared Right, this is it. Okay.